here comes the Bundesliga's first player from the Faroe Islands, Johan Sweepon Edmundsson. In September 2020, history was made. He took on the shot and finds the target. Johan Sweepon Edmundsson, yeah. the Bundesliga's first ever Faroese goal scorer. Johan Simon Edmundsson is leading the Faroe Islands' unlikely rise from footballing obscurity. A tiny island nation in the North Atlantic, the Faroe Islands is part of the Danish Kingdom. Just 52,000 people live here and they share one big passion. Here in Faroe Islands football is huge and, and everybody is crazy about football. In a little village like this, you can be happy if your children play football because there is not so much to do. Football means everything because in a small village you don't have that many options. The first football club was established here in 1892, but the national team only gained FIFA membership almost a century later in 1988. They've caused major upsets, beating teams like Austria and Greece, but have never qualified for a World Cup or Euros, and often lose to major footballing nations by a wide margin. But that hasn't dampened their spirit. We are uh, in our national stadium, uh, Torsvöldler. Now, after the construction, I think there will be about, I don't know, around 5,000. But of course, for a nation like Faroe Islands, it's OK, because it's uh, 10 to 12 percent of the population watching football, watching our team in, in one single game, and actually that's probably world record and fantastic. The nation now boasts 168 UEFA licensed coaches. That's around one per 300 inhabitants. In England, for example, there is one coach for every 165,000 people. Bill McLeod Jakobsen is one of the most experienced coaches here. Almost everybody are, are playing. If you go a couple of years ago, 100% uh, or 99% of, of all the kids uh, in school, they played football. Uh, last couple of years, maybe not that much, but we are up to I don't know, 70, 80% of all the, all the pupils. They are, they are playing and, and playing in, in some kind of a club environment. There are more sheep than people living on the islands, and it rains 300 days a year. Still, outdoor pitches are the norm. So, why is the sport so popular? Probably because of the national team. There are many pitches here. We have around 15 to 18 clubs that are playing, and, uh, and it's, it's, uh, the, the, the football environments, they are, they are filling a lot in the, in the landscape. Uh, it's quite easy here to play football. There are 26 stadiums and many more all-weather pitches across the 18 islands. Johan Simon Edmundsson grew up here in the tiny town of Tuftir, right by the former national stadium and an adjoining artificial pitch. When he was not in school, he played here all the time. Uh, yeah, all the time, especially at the summertime, because here in the Faroe Island, in the summertime, it, it's, uh, it's uh, never getting dark. So uh, they didn't find out to come home. So they play football and fl football forever, like, all the time. And uh, his mother has to come up to the stadium and uh, give him bread. So uh, something yeah. good to eat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it was hard to to get the children home in the evening because um, they wanted to play. You know, later it was the better it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's different where uh, where I'm from. I lived like 100 meters from the football pitch. Professional footballer. That was. Uh, that's not something that happens here. So it's been a great adventure. Plying his trade for Bundesliga side Armenia Bielefeld, Edmondson is the only member of the national team setup signed for a non-Nordic club. His success is not a surprise to those who've known him longest, like his former coach. The hours he spent at the pitch, also after training, uh, he was doing many of the right things, and, and he was always there on the pitch, working, working on his uh, on the skills and. Uh, Actually, you can see right away that, that if one goes, it will probably be on Simon. His childhood friend and neighbour, Andre Olsen, is now an assistant coach for Capital Club B36 Torshaven and saw the dedication firsthand. His life back in the early days was dedicated to football and uh, when he became a teenager, you could see right away that, uh, that he lived uh, as a footballer. Uh, he is uh, probably uh, the best player that, that has played uh, for the Faroe Islands. 
Even by Faroese standards, Edmondson came from a small club and finding coaches and teammates was by no means an easy task. My first coach was my father. <laughs> he was the, the coach of the team and uh, yeah, when you come from a village, I think with 1200 people or so, we had like maybe eight or nine, maybe 10 guys in my class and uh, we needed seven at least to have a team for the youth team. So uh, we were almost forcing each other to, to play so we could have a team. If the training will be good, it is necessary that the parents help the, the club. Sometimes Jan Simon said, uh, you want me to do more than the other boys. And he, were, he was, um, I think, sometimes harder uh, with him than with the other boys. So when that was, it was good for him to have a mother. A mother who helped him control an aggressive streak that could have derailed his ambitions early on. My father and the first coaches I had in my career, they had a big task because uh, I really had a bad temper when I was younger and I couldn't handle to lose. One game here, here on Softer, uh, did the coach from the other team shout uh, to his team and uh, over time lose. And he was so angry that he went over to the other team's coach, kicked him in the ass, and uh, the other coach got angry. And uh, Johan ran, and, and the other coach came after him, and, he, and Johan ran from him down to our house and closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> Jon Seaman needed plenty of patience as the path to the big leagues from the Faroes is anything but easy, even for someone with his apparent talent and drive. His first taste of football abroad came early on and helped confirm his ambitions. He went uh, to Denmark to Esbjerg when he was 15 or 16. My, uh, my brother lived there, so it was easy to go to Esbjerg. And uh, then they find out he was as good like the Danish boys. And, there, he, I think he, he wants to be a professional. And we decided that I should move to Esbjerg with him and with all our boys. So we moved to Esbjerg but, um, uh, and got an apartment there. Uh, but he got uh, injured, so we go home again. Then he came to play with under 21, and I guess he was only 18. And then he scored against Russia, and uh, the coach from Newcastle contacted him after the game, and it ended with that he got to Newcastle. <laughs> but soon after, a coaching change at Newcastle United saw him quickly fall out of favour at the English Premier League side. He once again returned home. When you are here in Faro, you grow up, you are the best player. When you come to England, there are come players from all to Europe and all are play with the national team. <laughs> it is a very hard competition. It is not like being very wild. <laughs> I think the, the setback when he came back to the Faroe Islands, he has become stronger mentally because when he uh, then moved again abroad, he had tried uh, the experience with the setback in, 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 in his head. I was better able to, to tackle it. After stints in Norway and back in the Faroes, Edmondson established himself in Denmark's top division. In 2018, he signed for Armenia Bielefeld. Promotion in his third season means he's playing in the biggest league a Faroese player has featured in. I'm the first in the German Football League and uh, of course I'm proud of that because we don't have that many professional footballers from the, from, uh, the Faroe Islands. The often derided European Nations League has given small nations a platform to build on. The Faroes topped their group, sealing promotion to League C on a level with nations like Turkey, Bulgaria and Greece. Back in, uh, in the 90s, where, where we first entered the UEFA competitions, it was pretty much uh, standing behind in a low block, trying to uh, struggling, trying to just get through the, these, these 90 minutes plus extra time. but. 
the last the last 20 years i think we, we have been we, we went from from that kind of football to to more playing trying trying to create chances uh, and you can see lately maybe the last five to six years we have going from beating Greece to, to now playing uh, competitive matches against the Baltic countries and many of the middle nations we, we are competing against now. So, uh, so we, are, we are not satisfied, but, but, but we are satisfied with the development we have been going through. In 2020, KI Klaxvik were 90 minutes away from becoming the country's first team to qualify for the Europa League while Andre Olsen's B36 Torshaven made it to the third qualifying round. Top clubs are benefiting from the continental cash injections, but the national team is still the main source of inspiration for Faroese football. When a German kid is watching Germany play, when an English kid is, is, is watching England play, you always get this, this feeling uh, and, and you support. and It's, it's, it's massive, it's, it's so important that we have our own. How many of the of the Ferris players would be playing for the Danish A national team? It's 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 quite uh, this this is a totally another story. And uh, with football, we have gone from uh, yeah yeah from from being a small tiny nation in the in, in the Atlantic to 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 be a nation that 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 everybody have a relation to, relation to uh, that everybody could know of and, and, and speak of, huh? because everybody know that, that, that Fair Islands play football and, and, and we get some remarkable results once, once in a while. The national team broke their previous points record in the 2018 World Cup qualifying campaign, while coaching and facilities continue to become more professional. Johan Siemens' success may even see more players make the move to top sides. I would also love to get other younger players from the Fair Islands too to also come to the professional football because I think we have a lot of talent there and uh, I just want, would like to the German clubs also to look in the Faroe Islands when they try to scout for talent. For the young player, then now he is the first one to play in Bundesliga. We all, all can see that this is possible to reach that level even you are, if you are small. The Pharaohs are certainly small, but also passionate and dedicated. So, what do you think? Could Johan Simon Edmondson lead the Pharaohs to a first ever tournament in the future? <laughs>